Doggies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG. Here with another episode of Ask Dave. This is part two of our explanation of the 7-3 antennas. Um, let's see, it's a, a spider. Spider? No, it's not a spider beam. It's a cobweb antenna. Now, one thing about this, I confirmed with 7-3 antennas, uh, Con or Constantine, the guy in charge, says there is no written instruction for this. Well, I've put together a um, one of these cobweb antennas before, so I kind of know how it goes. But I really think there should be written instructions. Um, we'll try and cover things here. We'll speed up some of the construction of the antenna uh, here. Um, but we're the thing that I really like about it is that this major piece of the antenna right here comes already assembled. It's got little hinges on here so that the arms can come out. And it's got little uh, screws that come here. You put wing nuts on those to hold those out. The uh, mounting brackets are already put into position. I mean, this is just really nice the way that it's done. So what we're going to do is go ahead and put this out like this. Now, we have extensions for all of these, and I'm not sure if we're going to have enough room here to do the whole thing, but we'll, we'll try and get close. This right here is the ballon. This has uh, screws underneath here, uh, and we'll put these in the right place. Okay. And the wires will be started out at the ballon, go around this thing, and come back, and there's a split at the back. So let's do this. Let's put on the extension arm. This is 10, 12, 15 meters. So we need an extension arm that's got, that's got 40 meters onto it. So we need a 17 and a 20. And see these things here are just little thumb sets. And they're gonna go over this split right here like that and then we'll tighten that into place by hand okay and then the 30 meter and 40 meter goes out here and again we use just our hands no tools I'm sure we'll be needing tools at some point. But there, that is how far the antenna goes out. Okay, now, <laughs> we clearly don't have a big enough spot uh, to be putting this together. So what he's doing is putting the uh, antenna on the little pole over here now. I used that pole to put together the hex beam, which is up over there. And I needed something to get it up off the ground. We push this in, there's a stop for it, so you know how far to push it in. And you want to get the little screw holes, see on the 40 and the 30. This is on the top. We want the 20 on the top. Here's the 17. And then this end will go into that down there. Now, we notice here that we've got 17, 20, 30, and 40 on here. One thing before you 
tighten it. You need to make sure that it's out here at the end. There's a slit in the metal there, so this will hold that nice and tight. Okay, so we're gonna all right be that way. <laughs> These right here are rope points that will sustain these are four of them. Okay, these four attach up here. Okay, and then that one. No matter how neatly you fold rope, it will tangle when you take it apart. Now these connect here. And the instructions show up putting it in the middle one. And we're going to put this up here. Okay. 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 Now, having done that, I'm going to turn this if we can. Okay. Now, to string the elements we start from the inside and move out let's see if we can determine which of these is the shortest they're not marked be nice as a bag so oh, wait a minute this is marked here this is uh, 20. 20 meters what's this it's in there This is 10 meters, 10 meters, okay. We'll just open the, this. Careful not to let the rest of this fly away. We'll take the tape off, okay. And, Like I said, no matter how neatly you do these things, they tangle. Now this plastic piece was on the far side of the antenna, but we string it from here first. If I can get it undone. You don't want to pull on this. If you pull on this, it puts a kink in the wire and kinks are nasty things now we'll lift this one up we notice there's two places here so we're going to take this off takes a little while and you don't want to drop this now, uh,
there. Okay, this goes here. Okay. And we're going to put this nut back on to hold it there. It's very hard to do in the cold. And with my 70 year old fingers. In fact, I think I will delegate this chore next time. And it doesn't have to be totally tight because we're going to put all the others on there too. Okay, so this comes down. Now, right here, we're going to grab one of these springs. Okay, and we're going to put it in this hole right there all right and then we're going to go around to the other side and put it in the next hole in fact i'm going to keep going so that i can wrap two at once this goes in the 10 meter hole It's so nice to do this. I remember doing this on the MFJ uh, spider or uh, cobweb. It was so hard to hook all of these together. So this will go. Into this one. And then pull that back. Okay. And now we're going to hook that there. There's our first loop. The others will proceed in an identical manner. So we're going to do 12 next. Okay. This is what it's looking like so far. You can see the wires there. And Callum is... Attaching that to the ballon. And it's going together very, very quickly. Now, one of the problems with these wires is the way they're wound. In theory, the way they're wound with a crossover wind like that should allow it to just come apart. Or put this under the uh, fork there. Or whatever that thing is. Yeah. And, and yet... To take them apart becomes a real problem because it tangles. You get one loop in front of another loop and so on. And so I would recommend to the builders that they coil their antenna wires in a simple coil. It'd be nicest if they could do it around a, a form of some kind, so you could just unravel the thing without that problem. These are wires that each of them is the length of a dipole. In the middle of each, in the back, is a piece of plastic which separates the two ends of the dipole, okay? So it's not a closed loop. Now, this right here is a little bit of extra extra wire and you can lengthen or shorten these to get them tuned up on each band each band tuned separately now as we know one of the fundamental rules of antennas is that everything affects everything and so uh, if you tune one band on here you're going to end up tuning all of them i don't know of any particular guidance on which to turn on straight. See, Callum here is uh, struggling with that uh, way that wire is wound, trying to get that undone. And it's almost for certain going to get caught in a knot. Now, one thing he's very careful to try and avoid is putting a kink 
in the wire. If you pull too hard, you will put a kink in the wire. And while you can sort of undo kinks, the problem with kinks is that they weaken the wire. And that becomes a place that can break in a high wind. So we don't want to do that. This turns out to be the thing that is taking the most time is unraveling and straightening out these elements. So I think we need a change here in how these elements are shipped. They should be in a single coil, preferably on some sort of a form. And this is complicated by the fact that those springs have little hooks on them. They're already assembled. Let's see what we've got here. Have we got this undone yet? We do. So we'll go ahead and put 20 right here with that second spring. Notice it's easiest to put it in from the side. And then we'll come over here. And then this is the end piece where it can be tuned. The springs are already put on. The tuning pieces on the end are already established. How about the the others? Were they like that? No, they were right. They were right? Oh. Well, here. Let's take that out of there. Okay, now let's turn it over this way. Okay. So there is an up and a down to these elements. The down, the spring ends go in directly. Now, if we look at this, this is the 20 meter. This is the size of a 20 meter cobweb right here. But this one happens to have 30 and 40 on it too. So that's why these extension tubes and stuff out here so that uh, we can put on the 30 and the 40. Well, there he is. In theory, they should just lift off. But the problem is that in shipping, the coil moves around and so on. And it's going to be harder because we're doing the 20 and 30 right now. And he's trying hard to use the way the thing is laid down, which worked until right now. And he's got a... Uh, uh, a tangle right there. I think uh, these were designed by 7.3 antennas to be uh, snag proof, but they're not. Okay, now I'm going to put these ropes that go around the outside. These are not mentioned in the video that uh, Constantine put together, but they are ropes that keep the thing square. So there are two lengths of them. So we'll just take them one at a time. My poor old fingers don't like these things, but they do make it easier than having to tie them. Notice we haven't used the tool yet. See now, what they don't tell you, because there are no instructions, 
is that these things clip here. Okay. And then go over to the same connector here. Okay, now notice how loose that is. That's because those others are too far apart. We'll get that figured out. Lovely. There's got to be a better way. Keep these things from tangling up. They sure are tangled up. Okay, Con, take a look at that. I don't like that. I like the fact that there are no tools. I like the fact that all of the things are put together, but I do not like the fact that this stuff tangles like hell every time you go to undo it. And then we're hampered by the fact that there's these little metal things on each end. Take a little, make a little quick cardboard form for these things to wind around so that they can be wound together. Can you undo this? I can't. There's three of them in there. We have spent the bulk of our time putting this antenna together, unraveling and unwinding wires and stuff. Don't wrap four strings together. Wrap each one separately and in a circle and put it over a cardboard form. Just wrap it around a cardboard form so that we don't have to spend all our time doing this. We've done this on each one of the wire wires that go in there, the 40, 30, 20, 17, 15, 12, and 10 meter wires all had to be untangled. And now here we are with this essential piece of rope, which is not covered in the video instructions, but we've just got to get it untangled and it's just is not wanting to come undone. Look that way. Yeah. Do you see the problem? I do. Okay, so that one, when you put it in over there, it's going to go over there, it's going to be short. So we're going to have to kind of ease the antenna wires through their little Got springs it. in order to get that thing straight. I would go so far as to say that we probably should have done this part. <laughs> yeah, before we put in the other wire to see that won't go. So I'll hold this and you'll have to kind of start in the, yeah, keep going. It's getting better. Okay, it's in. It's actually done. Essentially. Well, yeah, we have to put it up. The antenna itself is done. Okay. It's done. The, can the antenna is done. Notice that we did not need a single tool. Oh, it's not quite done. There's one more step we have to do. And we'll do that in a moment. But we've got this thing. I would recommend, you see this outer white rope that holds the stretchers apart? That should be put in before putting in the other elements. Now I do recommend that you either have a place as big as this square. My porch here is too small. So that pole in the ground is what I used 
to assemble my hex beam with it was assembled sitting on that pole. So now we've got just a few more things to do and we'll be done. Hey, this bag of parts has lots of spares in it, but what we need is one, two, we need uh, 10 of these little things. And you know where the uh, bolts go through that plate in the center there? We need uh, two hex nuts on the bottom of each. These hold that thing down, whereas as you noticed before, those bend up on a hinge. Well, they won't bend anymore because we've got uh, wing nuts over this thing. Now, let's look at the extra parts. We've got one, two extra springs. We've got an extra uh, hose clamp. Uh, these, you can purchase the screw-driven ones in the store, like a Home Depot or something like that. Here are extra little screws and stuff for the uh, ballon. Underneath, they've got a screw here and a screw here that has a, a wing nut uh, on each, but they're, they're a little smaller than here. So there are ample spare parts in case something breaks in a storm or gets dropped or something like that. So here we see without any tools uh, there's a pole at the top that's stretched down by rope to the outward poles to keep them up. Okay and we have uh, this white rope uh, in between so that uh, it'll keep these at 90 degree angles to each other. So there you have it. We have this very nice antenna all built, all ready to go. Uh, it's going to go up on a pole over there. We're going to take the uh, reference antenna down while we test this. And we'll test this. Uh, it should be omnidirectional. And it's... Uh, if it's anything like the MFJ uh, cobweb antenna, it will be slightly less than a dipole. But we'll find that out real quick when we put this thing up to test it, which will be in the next video. So there you have it. If you would like to help this channel financially, you can do so by going to decastlercom slash support. Also, please take a look at the giveaway for this month, whatever it is at uh, dcastler.com slash giveaway. And please subscribe, click like, and comment. And tell your friends about this channel. And until we next meet, 73.